Listen, this is Evangelist Lewis Crawley coming to you once again and want to be a blessing to you through God's word. This is the Wilderness Prime Ministry. And we're just thankful to God that he's opened this door once again. I would love to share with you what God has given to me, but this is good. Leaning, ha, leaning. Leaning, safe and secure from all alone. Just lean on him. No matter what's happening in your life, just lean on the Lord. The everlasting Listen, amen. I just thought I'd get a little bit better in there because to lean on Jesus, no one else. Many times that we come into a situation where all means have failed, all uh, 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 ways of trying to get out of circumstance fail. But you can lean on Jesus. Amen. I would love to share with you again out of the word of the Lord. Uh, you know, what we're trying to do is get those who want to be committed to Christ. Those that are willing to give up, deny themselves of all the pleasures of the world and fix your eyes upon Jesus. We're just trying to get you because some, listen, some going to fall away anyway because it's like the seed that's planted on top of the earth. It has no root. And when the sun comes up, it'll scorch it. And it will not yield forth fruit. But if you get that seed down in the earth, and the Bible says, except it die, it will not bring forth fruit. But oh, if you can get yourself planted in Christ, you'll go from strength to strength to world, this old world you realize it's not your home and it will not mean a whole lot to you anymore. Let me share with you out of God's word. Let's, let's have a, uh, a word of prayer. Then we will share father in the name of Jesus. Once again, we thank you for allowing us to come into the homes, the cars while they're out walking, uh, whatever they may be doing. They stop a brief moment and feast on the word of God. Lord, I, bless, I pray that you bless this word that comes forth, that it will touch, heal, and deliver. And Lord, those that be sick, whether it be of COVID or any other problem, cancer or whatever, that you would touch them, Lord, and bring a healing. For you said we shall be able to lay hands on the sick. And they shall recover. 
I pray God's recovering upon you even now in Jesus' name. Devil, loose your hole. Father, bind him and let him be cast out. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty in Jesus' name. We would love to go directly to God's word to encourage you. Again, those that want to, we speak many a time, say we want to get higher in the Lord and deeper. And it can be done. John, in his, his epistle, made a statement that caught and hung up in my spirit. And I've been feasting on it, thinking about it, meditating in it. And I would love to share it with you, if you would let me. In the epistle of John, the first epistle of John, chapter 1, just one verse. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you. That ye also may have fellowship with us. And he made this statement that just, just, oh, it made me feel good in my soul. Truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ, truly, you know what? Nothing else would, 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 would even compare to having fellowship with the Father and fellowship with Jesus Christ, his son. And I like what he said. He said, truly. And then he, 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 he made the statement. He said, I want you to have this same fellowship that we have. You can have it. That's why I say you don't have to fall. You don't have to be weak. You don't have to walk around like a sad, sad chicken getting ready to get his head cut off. But you can, the, 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 the joy of the Lord in every circumstance that can become your strength. Why? Because you got fellowship with God and then with his son and you sandwich between good God of my, you think about that. You give that some thought. Anytime life's uh, recessitude gets you down, if they get you down, what you need to do is remember, I'm sandwiched between God and his son, Jesus. And Jesus made a statement. He said, they're in my father's hand. And no man is able to pluck them out of his hand. So if you fall or if you fail, you do it because you want to do it. But even on top of that, thanks God that we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. So when you have fellowship, there is a sharing of the same goal and interests and beliefs and if you believe that Jesus is the son of God oh my God from Zion you think about that if you believe that Jesus is the son of God the battle that you are fighting is over with why? because he's more than a battle axe and he's telling us that we are more than conquerors through him that what? Loves us. God loves us. So we want to have that fellowship and friendship and relationship with God. If you build on a, a, a relationship, as I foresaid before, my wife and I have been married, I believe, 42 years. And over those years, if you pinch her, I know about it. Let me let me tell you let me tell you this real story real quick and 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 maybe we can relate. We had gotten home from church uh one evening and we lived in another house then, not this house, so I don't want you to be afraid if I invite you over. But we had a big storm the day before. But anyway, my wife went down to the basement to do something. And I'd fallen asleep. And she said, 
when she opened the door. Oh, it was a little long. I say he might have been about a foot and a half long or some green snake. Uh, it's a garden snake. They're, they're not even poisonous. But anyway, I know when you say snake with us, you know how we get. But anyway, listen, I had fallen to sleep. I'd gone to sleep. And she did not call my name loud at all. She just said, Lewis. And immediately, not, 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 I didn't wait. I didn't waste no time. I got up immediately and came downstairs and I killed that rascal. I'm trying to tell you when you have that fellowship with God, God will meet you in trouble because listen, that snake could have gotten lost in the house and grew. But look what God did. God, God, I, listen, I told you we've been married 42 years. It don't take much for her to feel my feelings and, and, and me to feel her feelings. So when you have that fellowship with God, we have not a high priest that cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. So whatever you're going through, what are you, whatever you are in right now, because you are in fellowship with God, even in the Garden of Eden, I, 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 before they uh, transgressed before God, I always thought about God came down in the cool of the day. Can you imagine what kind of fellowship that was? When he came down in the cool of the day to talk with them and they reminisce of what they did during the day. Then you find Jesus after he called Abraham out of the land of the Chaldeans, And he had to deal with Abraham over a few issues. And once Abraham got it right because Abraham was willing to give up his son because he knew the God that he served, he came to know him that way. Through that fellowship, friendship, and relationship, he came to know him that way that if I put him on the altar and kill him, God is able to raise him up. So God said, uh, Peter made known that Abraham, a friend of God, he made him a friend. Look at Enoch. Boy, I, I really, I, every time I just read that little verse about Enoch, and the Bible says Enoch walked with God and was not because God took him. I'm just trying to tell you, instead of you being weak, instead of you being a weakling, instead of you... Uh, just letting things overcome you and you're always in despair, you're in despondency and, and, and you're depressed and, and you just don't, I mean, you, your mind is always in a turmoil. It just, just wrapped and tangled things in your mind. You can't, no, 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 no. Cast your cares upon him, Jesus, for he careth for you. Job made this statement. Acquaint now thyself with him. Look, watch this. Job 22 and 21. Acquaint now thyself with him. And then do what? And be at peace. Listen, the peace that Jesus gives you, not like the world gives. The world is controlled by what they see. They're controlled by what's happening. But it's already happened. Jesus died, buried, resurrected. Sits on the right hand of God. All the, listen, everything he has dominion over, everything he has, whether it's principalities or power, he has already defeated the enemy. So there is no problem. As I said before, we have not a high priest. He can feel everything you feel. So he said, come now and acquaint thyself with him and be at peace. And Good shall come unto thee. Good will come unto you. So don't get caught up in the situation. You just hand that situation and circumstances over to God. Why? Because you're a friend of God. You have that fellowship so with him 
that when trouble arise, don't be like the boys on the ship. Jesus, the Bible said that Jesus will die behind the part of the ship asleep on a pillow, not concerned about being on the sea. And when the waves start acting up, they did not know. They had forgotten about who was on board. And I remember the story of the boys, two fellas, after Christ had been crucified. They were on the Emmanuel's Road discussing the situation and circumstance that had occurred how Jesus was crucified and the Bible said Jesus kind of cruised up alongside them. Oh, you ought to let him walk beside you today. You ought to do it. Because when he walks beside you and you discuss your problem with him, listen, when Jesus got through talking to him, oh, hallelujah, praise God. When Jesus got through talking to them two fellows, hallelujah. Glory to God. And they sat down and had supped with him. And the Bible said when he, he broke the bread, and then he, uh, they had taken him home and, and, and they sat down with him and broke bread. And as they did that, he vanished. And the two fellows said, oh, did our hearts not burn while we talked? with him in the way. So John says, truly our fellowship, our friendship, our relationship is with the Father and with the Son and you in between. Three become one. What my Father do, I do. What my father say, I say. Whatever problem come my way, it's, a young, uh, I remember this lady, she got sick, awfully sick, and, and I know the Bible talks about the woman with the issue of blood, but this woman in the, in the now day, along with that woman with the issue of blood, her body had gotten so messed up and it was sickly. And after the doctor gave her his diagnosis of what it problem, she testified and, and she said, Lord, this is your body. I didn't make it because you said every, every member of my body is written down in your book. And Lord, your body is sick. Will you heal it? And he said, ask of me. See, that's when you got real fellowship with God. You, yes, we may go to the doctor, but if God don't provide the healing, you'll never be healed. So John says, truly, I mean really, I mean sincerely, our fellowship is with the Father. And notice that Jesus when Jesus was talking to the disciples, he said, I call you no more servants, but I call you what? Friends. Because a servant don't know what his Lord do, but a friend knows. A friend in need is a friend indeed, so the saying go. So anytime you're in need, you call on Jesus. Ha oh, my, 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 my. Listen, there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. And Jesus said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. That's what Jesus said. Why? Because you're his friend. And when you become a friend of Jesus, oh yes, problems will come up. It's no doubt they will come up. Situations and circumstances will come up. But he is a friend unfailing. Ah, Yaboshini. A friend unfailing. He will never fail. He will never let you down. 
So John says, hallelujah, glory to God. My, 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 my. He said, truly, our fellowship is with the Father. You ought to make sure that you are in line with God. And you're his friend like Enoch was. You were his friend, like Joseph was, even down in the land of Egypt, sold by his brothers. He did not forget God. No matter how the situation or circumstance may be, don't you forget God. Joseph down in the land of Egypt, a little strip of a lad, and this woman, Pharaoh's wife, tried to take advantage of him. But you know what he said? And, and we all do. Listen, these things are said so that we may know. Listen, let us pay the most earnest heed to the things that we have heard, lest at any time we let them slip. He told Pharaoh's wife, Shall I do this thing to God? And even though the matter got worse, God was still in the plan. She meant it for, his, for evil. And his brothers also mean it, meant it for evil. But God, <laughs> hallelujah, be thanked. Because, hallelujah, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro. Hallelujah, glory to God. He's seeking, hallelujah, who's going to keep the faith? Who's going to stand after? Hallelujah, glory to God. It don't look like the situation would get any better. But listen, let me, let me, let, let, let me move on. Let me move on because I'm just trying to stir you up to where you realize what John said truly. And you can make that statement and we want to make that statement. That's my desire to say, even as John said, truly my fellowship. And then you can invite others in. Listen, if what you're doing is not working, come on in the fellowship. We used to sing that song. Come over here where the table is spread. And the feast of the Lord is going on. So the Bible says to us, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadows of the wings of the Almighty. That's what kind of fellowship you in with God. Hallelujah. I will save the Lord. He's my refuge and my fortress. Jesus built a fence around me every day. My God, in him will I trust. They that trust in the Lord shall be like Mount Zion. Hallelujah. A city that's on a hill that cannot be destroyed. And he goes on to say, because thou has set thy love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high. God will get you out of that situation. Because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble and deliver him. So the fellows on the ship. Realizing that. They have a friend in Jesus. That's all I'm trying to tell you today. You have a friend in Jesus.
when the storms of life are raging, hallelujah, call Jesus. Call him by his name, Jesus. So John says, truly, our fellowship, friendship, and relationship is with not only Jesus, but the Father and the Son. And as I started out before, and you sandwiched in between, they got to get to Jesus through the blood and to God before they can get to you. And I guarantee you that their hands is too short to box with God. Let me tell you the story. And I'm, I'm about through. All I'm trying to do is encourage you that, listen, you can, have a fr you can have fellowship with God in such a way that you are not distracted by what's going on around you. You are not distracted. Let me tell you about this story that I heard about this little woman that went to the grocery store to shop. And this old mother, you know, she's, on a fixed income anyway. But loving the Lord the way she does. Had prayer and said, Lord, I have to go to the grocery store. And I need you to watch over me and keep me. Take me out and bring me back. According to your word, you should be able to go out and come in and find pasture. She gets to the grocery store. And while there. Several men came in and began to rob everybody. Sticking them up. Holding them up. Put your wallet in here. Put your money in here. Put and This little old mother began to run around the store. Oh my Lord. Feathers. Hallelujah. Feathers. She just calling on the Lord. Feathers. See what's foolish is to the world. Hallelujah. It's salvation to God. Feathers. She just running around. Feathers. Feathers. And they're robbing everybody. And one guy asked him, said, what about her? She said, she crazy. Don't bother her. Oh, my, my, my. She's covered with the feathers of God. Everybody in the store got robbed. Hallelujah. The store itself. The manager. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The janitor. Hallelujah. And the patrons all got robbed. But she was running around saying, fellas, they didn't know what she was saying. They thought she was crazy. But God had covered her with his feathers. And she was beneath the arms of God. And when it was all over with, they took her inventory to find out who got robbed. And out of the whole store, they said one lady was untouched because she was in tune with God. Leaning. Oh. Why don't you lean on him today? Safe and secure. From all along. Just lean on him. Oh. Yes. Oh, the ever. Just lean on his arm. Just do it today. Don't you allow the enemy to distract you. God's got not only your back, but he got your front. He's got you on the side, right and left, back and front. You just lean on him. And you can have the testimony that John had. Oh, they might want to burn him with oil, but God made the oil. Look at the Hebrew boys. They might have been in the fire, but God took the heat out of the fire. Made, a, made the lion become the pillar for Daniel. Why? Because Daniel refused. He refused to bow. Will you just lean on him today? Do it today. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm praying right now that even as John declared truly our fellowship, is with the Father and with the Son. Lord, I'm 
praying now that those that are standing at the crossroads, those that need to make a decision, those in whom the devil will have bound, that Lord, that you would set them free and bind the hands of the enemy. Let the devil be cast out. Whatever problem they're running into, whatever situation your children may have, Lord, let them lean on you. Lord, lean, continue to trust in you, knowing that you cared for us. So right now, Lord Jesus, let them come into real, full, sincere fellowship with you. Hallelujah. And they can see I'm leaning on Jesus Christ, the Savior. But last in arms. Just lean on him today. That's my encouragement word to you. What a fellowship, and you can have it. John mentioned it. Why don't you stew on this for the next several days? Truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son. Listen, if you have been encouraged by the message, I ask that you, if you will, to subscribe, like, and share. And again, hit that little like button for me. I appreciate it. I'm not asking anything of you. I just want to share God's word. And if you do that, God will bless you. And listen, what a fellowship and what a joy divine. Leaning, ah, my, 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 on the everlasting arms of God. Listen, this is my prayer. May the Lord richly bless you is my prayer to you. God bless. Amen.